longer V1 laser. We're going to make a baseboard for it and a layout grid. And I'm doing this one here a little bit different. Show you coming up. I'm Roger walking with the shop and I'm making a baseboard and a mount and a layout grid for my longer V1 laser. And this has a little bit different type of leg on it. They are round, as you will see when I bring the laser back over here. So I measured that and it measures one and 15 sixteenths, or technically one and 63 60 fourths. So what I've done is use a two inch Forster bit, made some holes in a piece of uh, three quarter inch MDO plywood. And I'm gonna be using this half inch MDF as the base, but I need to cut this down to size, so I'm going to cut the base down to 30 by 30. That'll be my baseboard, and these here I'm going to cut into 3 inch square with that 2 inch hole in the center, and I'll drill and countersink some holes in the corners, fasten this down to the board as you'll see when I get set up to do that. So, first I need to get a baseboard cut. I threw this in because everybody says I, I never use my table saw. Well, yes, I do. I use it all the time. So, there. Now I'll get my uh, laser over here. We'll get this laid out. So here I have the laser sitting on the, uh, the baseboard, and I have cut my little squares here, which will, the legs will slip into those. This here is just a little trial fit. i got to do a little sand in here. So it'll be something like this, except I will square it up on here before I screw everything down. That gives you the idea. That way when I decide if I want to take the laser off of here, and then when I go to put it back, my layout grid will be in exactly the same place in relation to the laser every time. And in the past I've always done this with uh, 3D printed parts. But here because of the size of the legs, and I could have designed something, but this was easy and quick to make. Let me get some sanding done and get some things cleaned up here, a little pilot holes drilled, get some screws, get this thing mounted. These little black rubber feet keep this from sliding around on my saw table because it's waxed and it's very, very slick. It also gives me something to grab when I want to pick it up and get my fingers underneath it. Okay, I'm going to be putting these blocks in. I've got the laser set here and fairly squared up. I'll check it a little further yet. 
but I'm angling these blocks at a 45 degree angle so that I have access to my screw holes with the laser setting in here. That way I know the alignment will be right. If I wanted to get real technical, I could square it up like this and make some marks, take the laser off and put it back in, but I've checked that it will not affect the travel at all. Uh, the head stops clear up here and you got lots of space at the back, so that's a non-issue. It just makes it a little bit easier to get this set in there square and screwed down. So, there I've got them mounted to the board. Now I just need to put the air assist on and get the cords and a computer and get everything set up here again. Then we'll get to burning a grid on this. What I'm going to do before I actually uh, burn a grid on this is I need to run a little bit of a test here. This is a new laser to me. It's got a 30 watt head or maybe a little, a little bit higher. So I need to focus this on a, just a scrap piece of MDF so I can make a couple tests of lines and text. Set my little kickstand down there and make sure it's straight down. And always make sure you remember to put that back up when you're done. So that's going to be my little test scrap there. Light burn opened up here. Uh, as you can hear the fan on this is a bit noisy. Get this laser fixed. Laser B1. Come seven, little home. And I could set the homing function to go a little faster, but I'm not in that big of a hurry here, so this is fine. So there it home. I need to get a little bit of text and some lines put in here to see how my grid's going to look on the test strap. If this has a 450 by 440 m and working area, I am going to use a 400 by 400 millimeter grid because I already had it made. And that lets me line up 99% of my projects from the center because I work in absolute coordinates 99% of the time and I work from center 99% of the time. So that will give me my layout and get me square and everything and whatever hangs over, hangs over. So I. I guess I could take the time to make another 450 by 440 grid, but I'm going to stick with my little generic 400 millimeter square grid. Okay, back to this. Had a little of what I call project interruptus, which means that. As I was part way through this, I got called off on something else, and I have not got back to this for days. So back at it here. I've got a piece of scrap MDF on here that I'm going to be doing a test burn on, and you're going to be wondering what the settings are. Uh, what I've got here is I've got two different kinds of lines according to the grid I'm going to make. One is going to run 5,000 millimeters per minute or 40% power. Uh, the second, which would be, a, and that's at two passes. This is. I need a nice deep dark line. The second set of lines will be 3,000 millimeters per minute of 50% power, two passes. That would be my uh, other defining lines, and you'll see it as I burn this grid in. And again, this is my uh, generic 400 millimeter grid, and there'll be a link in the description where you can go on our website and download it for free if you like. I'm just giving these settings up front, and again, you need to run a test on your own with your own material and your own laser because everything can be a little bit different. Things can vary. Okay, for my numbers, they're going to be on here. I'm using offset fill, 8,000 millimeters per minute or 40% power. Um, here I'm going to be doing the test burn first. And I think I got that MDF in about the right place here, so we'll frame it and make sure. And again, I have the laser set to frame slowly so that if I need to adjust something, I can do it. And I don't need to make the test this large, but why not get a better idea of it? I did uh, put my number in there the, for the text at uh, the same size as what will be on the grid. And my line spacing uh, on my lines here is 10 millimeters. So we're all good there. 
I have this air assist to automatically come on. We'll give this a start, let it go. Well, as you can see there, there's my lines. This is going to be the basis of my grid. Hopefully these will come out darker. It doesn't really look like it here, but I can always add another pass. This here will be my number. I might reduce the power on that just a little bit. Because I got a little bit of scorching there. The next thing I need to do is set my focus to actually be on the baseboard here. So to do that, we got the little kickstand we drop down. I lower the laser to touch that. Setting that back up. Don't forget to put your little kickstand up. Now I need to load my grid file. Okay, again here, this uh, grid is 400 millimeter square, which is not the entire working area. But rather than build a completely new grid, since I do everything off from center, this will still be in the center, and it will give me a layout of 400 millimeter square, which would be fine for this purpose. I don't need to create a completely new grid for this. So I've got this centered in my page in Lightburn. I'll frame this here. Of course, this will frame slowly because I have my uh, framing speed set that way. And yes, there is a little scorch on that piece of wood that's from a different project at a different time. It isn't going to affect anything here. Total burn time on this is 25 minutes and 40 seconds. Okay, even though I do use absolute coordinates and I always start from center, I still frame my projects just to make sure nothing is wonky. That's a technical term, by the way. So here we are set. And all I need to do here now is hit start. And the air assist comes on, as it should. I like that automatic feature of the air assist. Of course, I'm not going to record the entire burn here, but we'll check back on this from time to time. This is what the grid looks like from the computer. In case you were wondering, I uh, want a little bit of a preview of what this is going to look like. Again, you can download this from our website. There's no charge for it. And I've changed, I did change my number tech setting to 9,000 millimeters per minute at 40% power. Of course, all these settings here I'm giving for this is for this laser, which is a 30 to 36 watt laser. So you have a 5 watt laser or a 10 watt laser or a 20 watt laser. These settings aren't going to work. You're going to have to make some adjustments. When you look here where it looks like it skipped the line, it did not. That is a different layer. That will be burned at a uh, slower speed so that it makes a darker line, I hope. MDF can be a little finicky sometimes. But generally that does come out with a darker line. If it's not dark enough, I can always uh, turn off the outputs to the other two layers and do it again. Now we're starting on the x-axis lines. And now it's moving to the second layer where it's a slower speed and a little bit higher power. And as you can see, that line is considerably darker. And that's exactly what I wanted. I've done this on my uh, other layout grids. It makes it a little bit easier when you're trying to lay projects out in a hurry if you've got them darker lines for certain things. And that crosshatch is X marks the spot. The center of that X is absolutely dead center. It's, now you can see how the uh, darker lines define some little bit larger squares. Those are uh, 50 millimeter square squares. Kind of aids a little bit when you're uh, lining up a project to have the darker lines there every 50 millimeters. 
These circles in the center are a great aid if you're doing any type of round objects, of course. Uh, it's very, very handy if you're doing round coasters or uh, plates or whatever. It helps to uh, get that lined up on center. Okay, what this has moved to next are the numbers, and you'll be able to see them here pretty soon when the laser head moves. I do not have numbers every 10 millimeters. I never thought it was necessary. I figured 50 millimeters was plenty. And I only did it on two sides. I didn't do it on all four. If you wanted to, you could add them to the other two sides if you like. So now you can see the numbers there. They're a little bit scorchy. I probably could have... Uh, Increase the speed a little bit higher, turn the power down a little bit, but they'll be fine and that'll the scorching will probably wear off of there over a period of time. They're still perfectly legible. A little bit of a public service announcement. Yes, it does have a shield on it to uh, block the beam and shield the beam. However, if you're going to stare at that and watch it closely, high protection. And I wear prescription glasses. I bought these goggles to uh, go over them because they're very comfortable. And I'll put a link in the description of what these are. They're not sponsored or anything, but they are the proper color. And they're properly made for this wavelength laser. And if you wear prescription glasses like I do, they'll fit over them and they are comfortable. So a comment I hear quite a bit is, you know, when you're running your laser, you don't have your uh, protective eyewear on. If I'm not looking at it, Provided I'm not doing glass or mirrors. If I'm doing glass or mirrors, I wear these anyway because of the reflect, refracted light. But if I'm just uh, working around and just maybe taking an occasional glance at it, since it is shielded, that, that's fine. But again, if you're going to sit there and just stare at it, or you want to watch it real close, put these on. And so there we have it. So there we are. Got my layout grid, got my uh, mounting board. Easily take the laser up, put it back down if I need to take it somewhere. Uh, you don't need anything special really to make these mounts. You don't need a 3D printer like I've done on my other lasers. So very simple thing to do. Uh, this is a very powerful laser. Again, if you're used to a five watt or 10 watt and you move up to this 30 to 36 watt head, you absolutely need to run some tests and turn the power way down as you do them until you kind of get established you get a baseline of what you need to do. Again, there'll be a link in the description on where to download this grid file. There'll be a link for the laser, of course, because I'm sure Longer would love to sell you one. Link for the safety goggles here. If you got anything out of this, appreciate you getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.